at Jeremiah23 on Twitter, and I've uh, done it on Instagram, but I don't think I've done it here on YouTube, so I'm going to, I'm just going to do it again. I have talked about it, but I'm just going to read the whole chapter, and we'll talk about it a little bit, um, pointing some things out in uh, Matthew 12, Christ quotes this thing, this chapter. Woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. This is written to the end days. There's a verse. I'll even read it first here. Uh, verse 20 of chapter 23. Uh, the anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, till he has performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you will consider it perfectly. Okay? We know this chapter is written to us in the last days. If you've already, if you've already um, heard me teach on Twitter or Instagram about Jeremiah 23, there's really not, um, I don't think I'm going to say anything new. So, you know, save yourself some time unless you want a reminder. So, woe be to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Remember, this is end days, and we're looking at his sheep, which the sheep are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So how would these pastors do this terrible thing? Therefore, thus says the Lord God of, the, of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, says the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whether I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name where, whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I shall no more say the that they shall no more say the Lord liveth which brought us up the children brought which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt but the Lord liveth which brought which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from every country where he had driven them and they shall dwell in their own land my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all my bones shake i am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine hath overcome because the Lord and because of the words of his holiness. For the land is a full of adulterers. For because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. And the course is evil. And their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. Wherefore their ways shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness... And they shall be driven, driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them even the year of their visitation, says the Lord. And I have set, seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesy in Baal and cause my people Israel to err. Saria, or Samaria and Baal, this is, this is referring to um, the northern kingdom. Samaria, it just, when, it, when it references that, it's talking about the, the northern kingdom, especially. And Baal is um, whatever name you're using that's not Yeshua. That's, that's Baal. It probably has a Christmas tree attached to it or Santa Claus or an Easter bunny, jack-o'-lantern, those types of things. That's, what, uh, that's Baal worship. And one guy, I was talking to a pastor actually today, um, 70 years old pastor, and he, uh, he just doesn't understand that when we do these witchcraft things, it empowers demonic entities. And that's why Christ even was casting out demons back in, in his time when he walked here because of the Pharisees teaching for doctrine, the traditions of men. They were Hellenized. Remember that. So when, when we don't follow his covenant, it was made to, made to protect us. Okay. I have also, this like that's what it's saying. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesy in Baal and cause my people Israel to error. I have also 
I have seen also, because there's two houses, in the pro I've seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of the evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them like unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Just look at Tel Aviv. Think about that, right? Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink water of gall. For the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they, <clears throat> and they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived his and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return un until he hath executed, till he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days you will consider it perfectly. I have not sent those prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. I am God, I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, not a gar God far off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, says the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the, in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget, by, forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. They've forgotten his name for Baal. You know, he tells you this in John 5, 42 and 43. I know you do not have the love of God in you means that you follow the covenant. The love of God is the Ten Commandments, John, 1 John 5, verses 2 and 3. Because one will come in his own name, and him you will receive. I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. He's basically just telling you. That's, that's as simple as it is. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What does the chaff what is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire? This is where it gets into it. This is where it gets into what Yeshua was quoting in, about blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which will not be forgiven. So I would suggest you don't do it. Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, like a hammer that breaketh the rock into pieces? Therefore, 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 behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, that use their tongue and say he said. Listen, I got to go back to this. I want to elaborate something on this. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. The reason why that's even put there is because loving your neighbor as yourself means that you rebuke them. But they steal those words from the neighbor and they're not rebuking anybody. That's exactly what's going on. Like you can go look up Leviticus 19, 17 to 18. Yes, I'm a broken record about it, but that's where we've gone in error. We're supposed to be walking in truth. So basic hermeneutics tells you, it tells you what um, this old commandment that Christ elevated above the 10, you know, showing us, what we're supposed to do instead of stoning people in sacrificial law we were supposed to rebuke our neighbor so that they don't suffer the consequences of sin and that's otherwise you hate your neighbor so that's what he's saying they steal my words everyone from his neighbor 
Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, that use their tongues to say, he said. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, says the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. And when the people or the prophet or the priest shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto him, What burden? I will even forsake you, says the Lord. Now, you know what that's talking about right there? Saying, oh, I'm saved by grace. Uh, I'm saved by favor. So, that put in context. I'll, 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 twist, the, I'll twist it to use that, that phrase. That's what he's talking about. Not twist it, but I'll, I will um, fulfill this. What he's talking about in, in, in um, Matthew 12. You know, when he says you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is grace. It convicts your, it convicts your heart to obey the holy covenants ordained of old. And Ephesians 2 explains this. But what they're doing is that they're, they're, they're um, calling, they're calling, um, oh, they're going around saying, oh, I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by grace. It's the Lord's burden. It's the Lord's burden. That's what they're saying. And that's, that's why Christ quotes this scripture in Matthew 12, calling it blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit of grace is God's Spirit. So don't do it. Don't say saved by grace out of context like that, and then continue on sinning. The reason I'm saying it like this and showing you is because they refuse to follow the Ten Commandments. Even Ephesians 2 is so easy to see. It's so easy to see, but people only hear what they want to hear sometimes, and the children of God, what did Christ tell you in John 10? Gracie, Gracie. In John 10, it says, we will not, we will not hear the wolves. That we, will, we just won't hear them. This is why he says, woe to the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep out of my pasture, says the Lord. You have scattered my flock. They won't go to the churches anymore. You know, each, each day more and more people and it's even in Amos. Even Amos says that he's going to confine us to our homes. You know, like his hand is in these things, but he's showing us that we can see this. That's why we, we proclaim it so that you guys can know as well. Okay, and when these people or a prophet or a priest shall ask thee, saying, what is the burden of the Lord? Thou shall say, say to them, what burden? I will even forsake you, says the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, save by grace, I will even punish that man in his house. Thus shall ye say everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother, what hath the Lord answered and what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall you mention no more. Don't say saved by grace anymore. For every man's word shall be his burden. For you have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoken? But since you say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because you say this word, saved by grace, I have sent unto you, saying, you shall not say, saved by grace. Therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you, and the city I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence and I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. There's a punishment to his church and the righteous just barely make it in. And righteousness means that you keep the Ten Commandments and they just scarcely make it in. You guys... I know we're going to go, when he says he does this thing because of his sheep, he does the second exodus. He does do that. And when they're out there, you can read ahead a, a little bit and you go to uh, Jeremiah uh, 30 and 31 and it'll tell you that they will cast away their idols and stuff like that. Um, and they and they will, you know, in, I think it's Habakkuk, one of them, or Hosea, it says they'll no longer call him by the name of Baal. And um, yeah, the second exodus is a cleaning process. That's why Christ says what's impossible for man is possible for God so that he, he will 
he will be doing this thing. We can catch that in Romans 11. It also says that what's impossible or um, that it's possible for God to graft in Israel again, you know. So he's going to, um, he knows his sheep. He says Israel and Ephraim is not hidden from him. Um, I just read that the other day. I can't remember which chapter I read it in, but it's there. And I think it's in Hosea, actually. And um, yeah, it is. It's in Hosea chapter 5, I believe. So yeah, the, the Bible's just loaded, you guys. So if you guys want, I actually might as well read Matthew 12, where he's talking about this as well. I, I, I'm, for some reason, I'm thinking I just did this. I just read this the other day, but I can't remember if I did it on YouTube or not. So, so I'm, uh, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to hear it again anyway. Okay. So starting at verse 31, I think, yeah, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Whoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. Neither him, neither in this world, nor, nor in the next to come. Yeah? Can I, I want to have Crack-a-Dinger. Oh, <laughs> that's, Can, that's craft dinner. Crack-a-Dinger. It's pretty funny. Can, um, where's Mom? So go ask mom. I'm I'm on the phone right now. But I always ask her. What did she say? Yes. Okay, then you can. But mommy, you use the microwave. Yeah, well, mommy's gonna have to cook it for you. I can't do it right now. I can do it a little bit. Okay. So whoever speaks uh, a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the, the world to come. And then it goes up to, I'm just going to jump up to 37 because this is where he quotes exactly um, um, what, what the message is in, in um, Jeremiah 23. And that is, for by your words, you shall be justified and by your, your words, you will be condemned. And even the fact that you say saved by grace, um, that doesn't fit with that, with that um, information that we receive, the commandment we receive uh, from, from our king, that by your words you shall be justified and by your words you will be condemned. I mean, if you're saved by grace in your interpretation of it, then we can all just continue on doing whatever we want. That's not what he's saying. And that's not saved by grace. That's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit of grace. You don't want to do that. You're calling what, you're, you're putting it all as God's burden, all nailed to the cross. That's not what this is saying. You know, when you're saved by grace, it means that you're allowing the conviction of the Holy Spirit of grace to teach you to follow the Ten Commandments. You know, like, I'm gonna, I have to do it. I might as well just bring it home with uh, um, the most, the most misquoted, um, I think one of them anyway, one of the mis most misquoted um, scripture in the entire Christian church. And that would be Ephesians chapter 2. Go ahead. Okay, so, and to you he has quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in the times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That would be the antichrist spirit of error. Paul just calls it differently than John. Among whom... We all had our conversations in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay? That's the children of wrath. But, and the children of di disobedience are the children of wrath. It's, it's no different. Okay? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherein with he loved us, 
even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Yeshua, by grace you are saved, by his spirit of grace. And he hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in, in Yeshua. That in the ages to come, which is right now, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, that's his influence on our hearts, in his kindness towards us through Christ. For by grace, by his divine influence on your heart, you are saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. It's not of yourself. It's not your works. Not of works, lest any man should boast. We are the workmanship created in Christ unto good works. What, it, what is good works? Good works is the Ten Commandments. It's going to tell you in the next two verses. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Before ordained means at the beginning of the book. Way back in Abraham's time. That his children were going to follow the Ten Commandments. I mean, what in the world is the church doing twisting the scriptures like this? It's incredible. You guys, you should, like when this video goes out, and if you know somebody that needs to hear this, then send the video or tell them yourself, please. Like the church wants, I'm sure there's many people were promised this, you know, that the, 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 the wheat and the tear are gonna grow, tares are going to grow together. Well, the, the way the story tells us is we got to go reach our brothers and sisters. That's the only way you're going to do it because they will hear the Messiah's voice. Not my voice, what I'm reading the Messiah saying and teaching us. So, for we are his workmanship created in, in Yeshua unto good works, works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. This is talking right to the Gentiles. Okay? That in that time before you were without Christ being aliens. Being, if you're without Christ, you're aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope. Strangers from the covenants of promise have no hope and are without God in the in the world. It's unbelievable what the this pastor uh, I could keep reading too. But now in Christ, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. If he didn't die on that cross, you couldn't follow the Ten Commandments. You weren't allowed to. That's why Romans 7 says, and this is specifically for the northern kingdom, they were in punishment, but Christ paid the price for them. And not only did he pay the price for the northern kingdom of Israel, <coughs> which was a call out for Israel to repent, the northern tribes, which were scattered into the Gentiles, he also said, God's word says, even the Gentiles can come and join my covenant as well now and obey the Ten Commandments. And if they do that, they will receive the Holy Spirit. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We were separated from God. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity of the law, or, or enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, which is talking about sacrificial law, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. That peace is the Ten Commandments. That's how he made peace. But the world is not gonna is not gonna accept his peace. They're gonna go and make their own definition of what his peace is. I'm telling you guys, this is how the Bible works. Please understand this. There is a thousand ways, so to speak, of him saying the same thing. So when he says, blessed is the peacemaker, it's an idiom. Blessed is the guy who teaches the Ten Commandments is a peacemaker. Blessed are the meek. The meek, Ten Commandments. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, Ten Commandments. They're, it's all idiomatic. It's, it, it's just, and that's so that, that the sheep can hear his voice and the pastors can't screw it up for us. They don't know how to. Okay? They don't know how. All they do is they just give you what they think these things mean all the time. And those guys are the ones that are scattering the sheep. You know? I, I am going to read John 10. Why not? I just opened right up to it anyway. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that <clears throat> entereth not by the door unto the, she into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when the porter, or sorry, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And the stranger will they not follow, but they will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Yeshua spoke unto them, but they understood not what things they were, they were which he spoke unto them. Then Yeshua said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that I am the door of the sheep, and, and that oh, all that ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, sh he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, not but to steal, and to kill, and destroy. I come that they might have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, but he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own voice are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scatter the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and, and am known, and am known of mine. And the sheep know him too. As the Father knoweth me, even so... Even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep, for the sheep. And there are, and listen to this, I love this. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going on today. Them also must I bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth the Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my Father. That's your, uh, that's your John 10 right there, ladies and gentlemen. And then you can go to Romans 11 and read the last bit of that. And then it talks about right there is telling you that that second sheepfold, the other sheepfold, is in the last days that's i might as well end it with that romans 11 go read it they these guys are very different the church is apostate that's what it means the fullness of the gentiles comes in and then the lost sheep of house of israel start to rise up so so he's able to graft them back in again like he said and then he tells the gentiles and this is a this is key he tells the gentiles don't you do the same thing that the Northern Kingdom did to even get booted out in the first place, which you guys call it today, Christmas and Easter. And that has caused sin to increase. Uh, this pastor, this is how demons enter into people. The church will be held accountable for this because that's why you wrestle with flesh and blood or you don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities because the whole church has been eating or drinking the cup of demons and of Christ for the last you know, 18, since the 1800s when they, they gave into, uh, into this witchcraft in the church, which has no part, in, no part in, in, in scripture. And it's everywhere through scripture, never to do this thing, including Romans 11. But people don't, they don't investigate what the Northern Kingdom of Israel even did. So in, it's that's in second Kings 17 to, to 25. And then you're warned in Romans 11, never do the same thing. And that's exactly they won't listen. And I'm, I just, I mean, you guys, if you are on my Twitter, you can go look at uh, Luke and I were rebuking a, this guy for the last two days and you can read the whole conversation. It's in there somewhere. And this guy just w won't, he won't let go. He won't let go of teaching the people. He's a pastor and he won't let go of teaching these, these traditions to uh, people. And he's, he's literally written of, and we're trying to warn him, but it's, it's so sad because they are so arrogant in their, um, in their doctrine, oh, I went to seminary, so I'm qualified. They think like a, the world, 
We aren't of the world. We can hear the word of God ourselves. We don't need to go to cemetery. And that's, that's exactly, they're, they're being uh, indoctrinated by, by um, man, you know, and then they, and they embrace it. They're part of the club. They get to be part of the club. Um, you know, that makes them feel puffed up about themselves. I don't know. I'm not like that myself, but naturally I just, I'm not like that. I'm not, I don't like being even, you know, I don't like being part of things like that, but they, you see that people do, you know, like you see it at, you know, I don't know. I think people probably go to church to be part of a, um, like a club. I think like people, people, um, like look at bike gangs, right? They, they're in, really it's because they're insecure and they need some, they need people backing them up and you know, they can't do it on their own. So they, they want, they feel tougher because they got all these guys that are backing them up. And they, so they, they live that life, right? They need that. It's based on insecurity, you know? And, uh, you know, we, when you, when you have Christ, what do you need to be insecure about? You, you don't even care about yourself. You don't look at yourself. See, that's what happens to you. You lose your ego. That's what you want to do. Lose your ego. You don't need to do anything to puff yourself up if you have no ego. You know, you just tell the truth. People will hate you. Get used to that. But it doesn't bother you because you understand. You are, you trust the word of God. You'll know. Hey, I was just talking to some. I think they were younger. Well, I know one's younger. I think the other person was younger as well. And he's trying to get rid of all these these lies in, in his friends and family. And he's getting rejected by everybody as well. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's going to happen. It's in the Bible. But, um, but there's some, even in Romans 11, it tells you, if you show the people mercy, if you do, then God says he's going to show them mercy. That's interesting, isn't it? His servants, if they show mercy, God says, I will show them mercy because you showed them mercy. I love that. And then he's, he, oh, the riches and the, un, how unsearchable it is to, to find God's ways and his mercy. So he, I have a feeling he's going to show a lot of people, like, you guys, if you keep the Ten Commandments and you show your, your families this, these things, it might come to a place, it, it, very likely. That's what I see. I've studied the Bible a fair bit. And it's very likely that your families are going to be saved just because of you. Yeah, it's going to be hard on you now, but later on, then then they're going to be they're going to be licking the dust off your feet because they were saved because you loved them as you loved yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself, which is the old commandment to rebuke, show mercy. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be saying it very nicely sometimes, you know? But because some people you're going to have to like, you know, rip them out of that fire, but other people you know, you can, you can talk to them and persuade them by, you know, maybe not so strong words. If you read what the Bible says, it is uh, very strict against the apostate church. And it's not very pleasant to know it. You know, I was telling somebody I spent, you know, I've said it to a lot of people, but I was telling somebody this morning that I, I cried for a very long time, not when I saw a lot of the stuff in the Bible, I can understand why people don't want to study the Bible, but it's better to study it and then come overcome that, that turmoil with understanding the, the solution to the plan and that you're part of it and you have to get to work. So that's the truth. That's what the Bible says. Once you've, uh, once you've been given the information and if you just keep it to yourself and don't do, don't do the work, or you do the bare minimum, you're, you're going to, there's a chance you could even lose your position because of that. So, and I, I mean, and I seen it, I see it go on. I see it go on. So I try my best to, uh, you know, wash feet and, and, and what have you, but you can only do what you can do. And, uh, and you just, you pray, you send up petitions to uh, God for your brothers and sisters. Um, so that, you know, you, you exercise, when God has things in the Bible that he's giving you permission to um, perform certain things with him, like when he tells you, he's basically saying in 1 John 5, if your sin doesn't, or your, if your brother sins a sin that's not unto death, pray for it and I'll listen to you. That's what he's saying. 
But if it's, if it's idolatry, don't even bother praying for him. You get your butt to work and you go rebuke him until he repents. That's it. That's the way it goes. So um, that's what it means in 1 John 5. Um, God's not going to listen to you if your brother starts becoming idolatrous. He's telling you, you go and pray for, you pray for him only if he's, if he's doing the, the sins that are not unto death. And idolatry, which is Christmas and Easter, is not, is, is idolatry and you're not even allowed to pray for these people. Now, I know most of us probably do anyways. I still do. All the prophets did, you know. Every time God said, don't pray for these people, they always do. Do you ever notice that? If you read the prophets, you'll notice that. They always pray for the people regardless of, uh, like when God says, don't even bother. They're like, oh, but they can't. And I understand that. Like, it's like, you just, it's, it's so sad when you know what's written in the book. Yeah, it's hard work. So you ask for the words, you know, ask for the words, make my face strong against them even so that they, they do repent, you know? That's, a, that's another big thing in the Bible. that com, What the Bible says compared to what, what the, the church is even behaving like as far as rebuking people, they, um, they're twisting it to keep everybody to keep their mouths silent. They don't want people to oppose them in the corrupted um, um, ways of the Nicolaitans that are running the church. The pyramid... It's like a pyramid thing above the church running the people. It's all organized crime, really, if you want to look at it like that. And uh, oh, of course it is. Evil, wicked, you know, narcissistic, so sociopathical men are oftentimes, uh, in studies, are shown are actually pastors. And, and, they, and they run these organizations. They want your money. They want your worshiping them. You know, they don't care what... What they, they, if they can read this book or a Buddhist book or any book that they can get. That's why, that's why like Joel Olstein is like a, a, a life coach, right? He loves that praise from people, right? He loves to be their hero. He doesn't teach them the word of God. He might say things that are in the word of God, but it's not teaching them the word of God. And that's, and that's the big fat blemish on the rest of the church's face because the only reason why Joel Olstein even exists is because the... The, the little country churches in the corner out in the country even don't bother keeping the Ten Commandments and they think that they can do witchcraft like Christmas and Easter as long as they whitewash it with their own self-righteousness, which is a, a smoke in God's nose, you know. And, uh, and that's, that's what it means to rob his, his, his sheep of, of righteous judgment. They're not feeding the sheep. You know, the sheep want to hear the word of God, and that's not what's being given to them. It's it's their um, apostate doctrine. And people say, well, and, you know, they always will. Well, you think that the whole entire church is going to be deceived? Uh, hello? That's what Christ told you. The whole world will be deceived, except for the very elect. And the very elect are the ones that are going to be grafted in, back into their tree, once the church goes apostate. The whole world will be deceived except for the very elect. If it were possible, they would be they would be deceived as well. But God says, no, I'm going to bring them back into the house. I'm going to graft them back in. Their punishment became over. That's what happened, you guys. Their punishment actually ended in 2008. And that's why people started following the Ten Commandments. So now these men and women that are popping up like grass everywhere, like that's what Isaiah 44 tells you, 44 verses 4 and 5. They're just going to start springing up like grass, and they're going to start saying, hey, I'm Israel. That's what's happening today. Or they're going to start doing exactly what Malachi 3.16 says, and they're going to start talking one to another, often thinking upon his name, which is huge prophecy that we've all gone wrong on his name, and all of a sudden everybody starts calling him by his name again. Interesting. That's Malachi 3, 16, 17, 18. Read that, you know, read that and, and, and put it on your fridge, you know, and see that every day. If you're in a group talking about Yeshua's name and, and um, fearing the Lord, which means the Ten Commandments, you, you, are, you are written of in the Bible, you guys. You are already pre-written in the Bible to take place. The fact that you can even hear 
Now, don't be disheartened either. Well, oh, there's so few. Well, yeah. And so when they go, some of these people are going to go through tribulation. And remember, the two witnesses are going to go out and teach the gospel to the four corners of the earth. Well, why? Because it's never been preached to the four corners of the earth. This Christmas Jesus um, ear-tickling doctrine in the end days is what's been preached to the four corners of the earth. His name hasn't gone to the four corners of the earth. This Jesus guy, this other guy has been preached to the four corners of the earth. And that, and their, their gospel is, all you have to do is call on the name Jesus, say a prayer, don't worry about the Ten Commandments, he did away with the law. Just come and fill up my uh, offering plate so that we can uh, get a bigger... PowerPoint system and, and, you know, get better sound system and, and get this, get these young people rocking and rolling with us here, you know? Meanwhile, you got pastors like that Ravi, Ravi Zachariah, you know, sexually abusing the women in his church, you know? That's because he's false, his false doctrine, you know? He's not a man of God. He's a man of himself. He's dead now. But he still teaches the same thing that every other pastor is teaching. They're false pastors. We're warned about it. We're warned about it many times. I'm going to still read one more thing. Why not? Read it so many times. I should read the Luke account for, of it. 19, I think it is. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what, this, what sign will there, will there be when these things come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ. And, and the time draweth near, go ye not therefore after them. They're going to come in his authority. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. It's not here yet. I have, I have to read this again, you know. I usually go to Matthew 24, but I do realize, and I should do a video about it, the difference between the three Olivet Discourses. Because really it's talking to, it's interesting because he, at one place he's, he's um, like Luke, for example, um, let's, I'll show you just something here. And he looked upon, he looked up and he saw the rich man casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in two mites. And he said, of a truth, I say unto you that the poor widow has cast in more. So he was sitting by the treasury. That's the point. It actually goes back a little further. So he was sitting by the treasury when when this took place. So you've got to see where was he sitting? The other time he's sitting by the temple, outside the temple. The other side, other time he, he says it, is, is at the Mount of Olives. Okay? So he repeats himself three different times. So obviously the way you should view it is at one point he's saying it, to, and he's saying it to the people in one of the, one of the accounts. I think that might be Mark. And some spoke of the temple, how, how would I get that to you? I should, re I should really do a video about it. And it, with a little more, like I got to get the, I got to read it and then get my thoughts together to show you this. But if you go ahead and read uh, Luke 21, Matthew 24, and it was at Mark, Mark 13. I think it's Mark 13. Mark might be, Mark doesn't have very many chapters in it. I'll, I'll just check while I got it. Oh, yeah, Mark 13. And he went out of the temple, see? And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Yeshua answered and said, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not, left, not be left one stone upon another 
that shall not be thrown down. See what he says even there? Catch your ear on that. He's saying all these buildings, you know? But we see, people will say, well, that happened in 70 AD. And and uh, and that's, all. it's funny enough, I, see, I still see all those old stones on all of those old buildings. Not all of them are, are knocked down yet. Some of them are. Lots of them are. But... There's still a lot of stones on top of a, on top of each other in all the buildings. Seest thou these great buildings? Plural. Plural. Not just the temple. There shall not be left one stone upon another. That shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple. Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately. See, and then he repeats this again. You see? So they ask again. And he talks them to a group of people the other time. It's just neat. It's just, there's interesting details. The other interesting details about the Gospels that you'll find. Oh, and John is, when this takes place in John, there is no Olivet Discourse. It's the uh, adulterous woman. And the crazy part is, it's what he writes in the sand, is Jeremiah 17, is talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. When the kingdom smashes it down when it comes down to earth. That's why he says there'll be some standing here that will not taste death until they see the kingdom of heaven coming. That's what you got to catch on to. That's the way you should listen to the word of God in those, in those types of ways. I hope I encourage you guys to do that. It's actually quite amazing when you start digging into this stuff and when you see it, it, just, it should just totally blow your mind. And then you'll see, my goodness, the whole church is totally deceived, you know? And that's what I'm trying to do. I know I only got a few people to, to tell this to, but you guys could tell other people, and then and those people can tell other people, and then we might save a few, you know? A few million would be good. I would be happy with that. Like Daniel says, right here, I'm just opening right up to everything I want to read when I think about that today. That's nice. Well, except for a little bit earlier there. Um, many, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So we're going to see some stuff and people are going to start wisening up. That's our hope, right? I hope you're not just thinking all about yourself. I really hope you're not thinking about just yourself. If I was just thinking about myself, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be doing videos for, for you guys. I don't do this to get popular. I do this to get the truth out. And uh, if I was trying to be popular, I wouldn't be sitting in the same spot against a dirty old wall in a crappy mobile home, sitting in the same broken chair every single time, talking to you at my kitchen counter. I'd be making some grand studio and I, you know, you know, it's not the way I, you know, I know it probably would be better for you guys, but if you, if you guys were to just read the Bible and, and you, you don't need me to teach you anymore, you can just go and read these things yourself and then absorb it into your heart because it's got to get there. It's got to get on your heart. It does me, it does no good to just stop at your ear as I speak it out. That's not going to do you any good. You need to get it on your heart. All of it, you know. And, you know, it doesn't hurt to sit down. I'll tell you something, you guys. I sat for eight days once. I, for eight days. And I just read the prophets. And I was just getting... It was like downloading a, much of the things that... Much of the things that I'm already telling you guys right now in the, of, of the scripture was probably 2017, I sat on the couch for eight days and I absorbed, I downloaded the prophets. That's a long time ago. I mean, yes, I continually refresh myself with, with the Bible, but it, that, that time frame was a major download of, of, of prophecy getting written on my heart, to, like understanding. I'm like, like, that's when I learned about, you know, I, like I always knew about the two houses, but that's when it was just, the major things were being shown to me. And, uh, and then it, c it continued on, you know? And I'll tell you, this is, this is how it works. God will reward you with, with knowledge. So if you, keep, if you keep your nose in the Bible, which is loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, De Deuteronomy 4 to 8, and if you do that, 
then he, he shows himself to you as you patiently wait, he will sh reveal you more and more things. That's what he says. So as you're searching the scriptures, like a king, you know, and it's the, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search that matter out. So when you're digging and digging and digging, he starts to show you the very promises that are, are in that book that, I mean, I, I kid you not, nobody seems to know. Like, ask somebody about the key of David, and the only person you're going to know that knows the key of David, if you know somebody I don't know that knows the key of David, please, please let me know in the comments who he is, or she, you know, because my brothers, my brothers know what the key of David is, and that was revealed through the Holy Spirit, so it's pretty interesting, and, um, we try to share it with people, and I guess, I don't know, I don't get a lot of feedback from, from people wanting to have the key of David, and it's like the, one of the biggest blessings in Revelation 2 and 3, you know, they think it's something else, and they can't, see, they can't hear it maybe, and that's why it angers them or something, and they just, they won't receive it. You won't receive it in your heart, even if it be told you. It's something you want in your heart, so it's a heart condition to even receive it. That's how we are... That's how we are spiritual beings. So anyway, my brother is texting me here. I've already talked long enough, so I'll go. And you guys have a great day. And uh, God bless those who have the gospel of the kingdom.